those are the three big games that we're definitely going to be paying attention to this weekend. But we do have a big slate of games coming through. There are no, and by big slate, I mean there are no bye weeks this week. It is insane. I was looking through putting this putting this sheet together so we can track our picks here, and there is not a single bye week in week eight, which is insane. Um, so we do need to start off. We are done uh, for a few weeks here with international games. We'll get to Munich. I think it's either week nine or week ten, uh, which thankfully so because I'm tired of these eight a.m. kickoffs uh, because I miss them. I'm at church. I don't get to see them. So uh, let's start off with our third day night game. Could could be very good. Cooper Cup is expected to be back here. Uh, Puka Nakua has opened up his 21-day window return from injured reserve as well because the Minnesota Vikings, they'll be heading into SoFi, taking on the Rams, who are two-and-a-half-point dogs at home. I'm going to take the Vikings here, but it will be good to see uh, uh, what Cooper Cup can do. There's been some trade rumors about Matt Stafford potentially heading elsewhere uh as well puka opening up his 21 day window i don't think he'll be ready for this week uh but should be ready by week nine yeah also uh tj hawkinson is also questionable to play in this game uh that would just be huge for the vikings offense i i can't pick against that defense though give me the vikings yeah the defense is very scary very scary uh into our noon slate of games and and let me tell you throughout the entirety of the rest of sunday we have some massive spreads but none larger than this spread here the tennessee titans they will head into detroit at noon to take on the lions who are 11 point favorites at home oh my goodness i don't like that points that's a lot of points i don't like that the the lions are good i mean yes (laughs) yeah yeah it, but the defense, the the Titans' defense is very good. Yeah, but they get tired by the second half because they're out there so much. That offense is poo poo. That offense is poo poo. All right, give me the Lions. Easy pick, Lions. We're gonna have a lot of team rides on this one, and Tommy oh, not to be my. in here to call him out. <laughs> <laughs> Next game at noon, we've got the Baltimore Ravens coming off a huge win against the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They'll head into Cleveland for a rivalry game against the Browns, who are eight-and-a-half-point dogs at home, and we have no idea who the starting quarterback is going to be yet. Jameis. We're hoping it's Jameis, Uh, but we don't know yet. That'd be nice. confirmed. Jameis. They don't have anybody for him to throw to. Nick Chubb is back. The defense is really good. I'll take the Browns to cover. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, they always play the Ravens pretty well, division matchup and everything. Short week for the Ravens. Short week, but Ravens are just on fire. Derek Henry is going to run all over the Browns. Give me the Ravens. Uh, we'll go to our next game at noon here. It is the Green Bay Packers. They'll head into Jacksonville, who's returning from their two London games in a row. And Jacksonville are four points without a bye week. Without a bye week. Without a bye, that, that's insane that they do not get a bye week upon return. They, I know they were there for two weeks, no. but that's gross. They said no. That's gross. Why? Shad Khan know? said no. That's that's that is negligence. That. I'm taking the Packers here. This is going to be a butt whooping. Yeah. uh, New, uh, newly hired slash friendly with the team coach, Robert Salah with, uh, with the Packers working on the offensive side of the ball for them. Apparently now I interesting. I I don't like that. It's an interesting tactic. Let's see if it pays off. Uh, Just give me the Packers right now. Anyways, (laughs) Uh, for our first game of the week, we've got the Colts. They'll head into Houston and take on the Texans, who are five-point favorites at home. Uh, they play it was 29-27 week one. Anthony Richardson did play in week one. Jonathan Taylor was available in week one. I wish I knew if Jonathan Taylor was available or not. That makes a big difference there. Because that makes a massive difference in this game. I'm going to say that he is available. Give me the Colts to cover. Son of a bitch. Damn it. 
uh, yeah, I think the Colts are going to win in Houston. It's just the trend that they have going on right now. Do you think that they even win? I don't think they that they win. win. I think that they cover. They You're win. calling for the win. That's crazy. Call me crazy, baby. <laughs> uh, next up at noon, we've got the Jets who will head into New England and take on the Patriots. At home, the Patriots are seven-point dogs. The Jets have yet to put together more than one game this season, and, and even then, that, in that one Patriots. game was against the Patriots. It was against the Patriots. It was also Thursday night football, I believe it was. The Patriots just got manhandled. They're soft. Their coach is calling them soft. The media is calling them soft. Not Bill Belichick. Not except for Bill Belichick. <laughs> You know what? I think this is the week that we actually get to see a little bit here from the Jets. I think Devontae Adams uh, gets himself a touchdown. Garrett Wilson probably still sitting on the sidelines because Adam Lazard is the wide receiver number two. Brees Hall gets involved a little bit. The, the defense there is strong for the Jets, and I think the Patriots live up to that soft moniker. I'll take the Jets to cover by seven. Man. A lot of team rides this week, apparently, because I want to take the Jets, too. I mean, Come on. It's, a new, it's a new quarterback for the Patriots going up against the Jets this time, but it's also Drake May, a rookie, going up against that defense. I I don't feel good about that at all. This is what Sean does. He doesn't like to go first because he likes to team ride, and it's boring. I don't like to team ride. I just don't like the Patriots. Next up, it's our second game of the week here. It is the Eagles. They'll head into Cincinnati and take on the Bengals, who are two point. Favorites at home. As much as I do not like Nick Sirianni or the Eagles, I still think the Bengals are not a very good team. So give me the Eagles. How much shit do you talk about Sirianni? I was not expecting that. Uh... Yeah, I think it's going to be a ugly, ugly, ugly game, but the Bengals really need this, and they're going to do everything they can to pull it out. Give me the Bungles. A uh, couple more games here at noon. Uh, second to last one here, we've got the Falcons. They'll head into Tampa Bay and take on the Bucks, who just lost uh, Chris Godwin for the remainder of the season, and they just lost Mike Evans till at least week eight. The Bucks at home wait, here wait, are wait. two. Or sorry, week eight, week eleven. I was going to say. Uh, I was I was thinking eleven and reading week eight, <laughs> uh, but he's out until at least week eleven here. The Bucks at home are two and a half point dogs. That defense started off really hot against the Ravens, didn't live up to their end of the bargain. Give me the give me Kirko and the Falcons, even though it's here at noon, and the Falcons have switched. Some roles here, or at least Perk has uh, switched some roles with with not being able to play at noon. I think they can easily walk away as winners here against the Bucks. Yeah, uh, they've already played once this year, correct? Yes. Uh, who won that game? Bucks. Yeah, the Bucks don't have the weapons anymore. Give me the Falcons all day. Last game at noon, we've got the Arizona Cardinals, who will head into Miami and play the Dolphins. Kua is back and expected to be fully healthy in this game. Uh, that is why Vegas has the Dolphins at three and a half point favorites at home. Ooh. Three and a half points. Three and a half points. I don't like Miami's defense, but with Tua back, this team is completely different. I think they take deep shot after deep shot after deep shot. I think Tyreek Hill is up for this game. So give me the Dolphins to cover. Yeah, I want to pick the Dolphins, too. I think Tyreek's a little too up for this game. Uh, Tua usually goes off against bad defenses. But I can't do it, man. Kyler's on the stardom. I think he's going to have an absolute day against the Dolphins. Give me the, give me the Cardinals. We'll get to our 3 o'clock games here. And in our first one, we've got the uh, Buffalo Bills. They'll head into Seattle, so from East Coast to West Coast, mm. and take on the Seahawks. They are three point dogs at home. Third worst uh, offensive line in the league. 
going against one of the league's better defenses. They're gaining two hours. Traveling east from east to west is much better than traveling from west to east. I think the Bills easily cover this game. And with Amari Cooper having an extra week and a game underneath of his belt for some chemistry, I think Bills walk away with this one easy. Yeah, Unfortunately, because right. I like the Hawks. You said it right there. Uh, Amari Cooper has another week with Josh Allen in this offense. I think he's going to have an absolutely tremendous game. Uh, go with the Bills. Next game at 305, you've got the Saints who are in cap hell. $81 million is, uh, negative in the cap for next year. They did just restructure Alvin Kamara's deal. Uh, gave him a couple extra years. They're kicking the can down the road. It'll help him out uh, for like next year. But that's do. one of the few things that they could have done to save themselves for next year. Bad move for Alvin Kamara. He just needs to get out of there, but they won't let him go because the heck contract is buns. Uh, they will be heading into LA. So another East Coaster heading to the West Coast. Uh, mm-hmm. And I mean, they're in the Southeast. They're towards the, they're not they're, on the coast, but they're on the Eastern they're, time. They're straight, they're straight down from Missouri. They're on the Mississippi River. Aren't they, uh, aren't they uh, East time though? No, they're Central. East. Oh, I thought they were East, East Coast time. All right, well. Straight down. Well, look at that. You learn Geography. something new every day. Geography, baby. Uh, well, the Saints, they'll be heading west and uh, into SoFi and taking on the Chargers. So two SoFi games this week. Uh, the Chargers at home are three-point favorites. Sorry, seven-point favorites. What? Uh, mm, you know what? Give me the Chargers to cover this one. How are the Chargers seven-point favorites in this? Seven point favors. Well, the Saints just lost all their receivers. They're dealing with rookies. They have uh Spencer yeah. Rattler at quarterback. The defense has been buns all season. Chargers at least have a good defense. They just can't score offensive touchdowns. No, they can't. Goodness. Well, uh big game from the Chargers defense for me here, and Dicker the kicker to get over three and a half field goals. Give me the Chargers. I, that, I would hammer that bet. Hammer Easy Dicker money. the kicker over three and a half field goals. Easy money. Um, Let's see. Our first game at 325 is Chiefs versus Raiders. We just discussed that all on the Chiefs podcast or in the other YouTube videos. So go check that out. Uh, and we'll let you know who we think wins there. I think that one's pretty easy to guess, but we did cover exactly what's going on with the Chiefs and a new acquisition, DeAndre Hopkins. So our next game at 325 is another 10-point spread here. The Carolina Panthers, they'll head into Denver and take on the Broncos, who are 10-point favorites at home. The Panthers may be starting a new quarterback. Uh, It is still up in the air. Andy Dalton and his family were in a car wreck in the last couple of days. I think he's okay, but you could see Bryce Young back in the game. Either way, it doesn't really matter. The the Broncos, he is starting, is that what you said? Yeah, nice. So definitely Broncos by more than 10. <laughs> now, what if this is just what Bryce needed? He just needed to sit sit and watch some games for a little bit. He's well, go, coming, go. going in against the Broncos defense, that's that, that that's <laughs> not what he needs. Good, welcome <laughs> he back to starting, Bryce. That is the worst game that he could have come back for. Yeah. Uh, the Commanders with Marcus Mariota scored 40 points on him last week. Uh Bryce is not going to do anything in this game. He's not going to be able to see over his line at all. So many points. Give me the Broncos. <laughs> uh, our final game of the week here, and it is the Bears. They'll be heading into D.C. and take on the Commies, who are two-and-a-half-point dogs at home. I'm not even going to question this one. Jaden Daniels in or out doesn't really matter. This Bears defense has shown themselves to be one of the best defenses in the league this year. I think they can put a hurting on the commies, regardless of what happens on the offense. I think DeAndre Swift also gets up for the game. Give me the Bears a win and a cover. Oh, win and cover. Yeah. I really wish I knew if Jaden was playing or not. That really is my whole entire point of picking the commanders, but I can't do it if I don't know if he's playing. So give me the bears. Wow. Going against your own team. Jade. Jade's not playing, man. 
We'll get to Sunday night football here, and this one looks like it's going to suck. It is the Cowboys. They'll head into Levi Stadium, take on the 49ers, who are four-point favorites at home. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, done for the season. Uh, Debo Samuel was hospitalized on Sunday during the Chiefs game with pneumonia-like symptoms. He has now been released from the hospital. We don't know if Juwan Jennings will be back uh, for the 49ers. Uh, CMC, Greg Kittle's going to play. Still out. Greg Kittle. Uh, uh, maybe out and injured. Um, the defense is really the only thing the 49ers have going on right now, and they couldn't stop a, a bad Patrick or a bad Chiefs offense. So, give me the Cowboys to at least cover here. Ooh, yeah, I think uh, Cowboys are gonna take a page out of what the Chiefs defense did last week, not against the run, but at least against the pass. Man up, man up on Brock Purdy a lot, uh, bring a lot of pressure in on him. And the Cowboys are going to cover. Also, want to throw this one out there. This Cowboys defense is putrid. It is horrible. And even with all of his weapons out, with a quarterback who is named elite, should be able to help others rise, Brock Purdy is only going to fall deeper into the depth of being a bottom-tier quarterback that he actually is. I can't wait to see it. (laughs) Monday Night Football, it's the final game uh of nfl week eight it is going to be absolutely awful because we've got the new york giants they'll head into pittsburgh take on dangerous and the steelers who are six and a half point favorites at home i don't even need to question it give me the stillers yeah uh one big thing i noticed after russ wilson's last game he was throwing the deep ball a lot and with confidence he has a guy down there who can catch the ball in george pickens and the biggest thing, he didn't have a corny catchphrase at the end of the game. They asked, they were trying to go, uh, interview him, to goad him into one. He said, no, we're just winning back to the locker room. Finally. Mike, Tom- Mike Tomlin's reeled him in a lot. And so it's exciting to see Russ do something. And I don't think I picked against the Steelers yet this year. I'm not going to do it right now either. Yeah, I mean, realistically, they're not that good of a team, but they keep getting these easy schedules, and uh, the NFL likes them for some reason. I think – it's not just easy schedule. They've they played some teams. Not not the worst schedule you can get, but that defense is for real. That's a pretty good any defense. any defense you put TJ Watt on, it's gonna be a real defense. Uh and and yeah, no, I, I agree. They're they're a tough defense and they're coached up well by Mike Tomlin, regardless of what's been going on on that offense, even when they've had Mason Rudolph. They've still been uh, a team that can contend to be a 500 or, or above team and barely make the playoffs uh, within the new format. So my my kudos to Mike Tomlin uh, and Russell Wilson. Uh, outside of uh, even a couple errant throws in that in the last game, looked pretty strong. So uh, against this pedestrian college ball team of the New York Football Giants, uh, expect Russell Wilson to look like a Hall of Famer. See, I. I'm not expecting him to look like a Hall of Famer at all because that Giants defensive line is still pretty good and scary. So look for him to struggle a lot with getting outside the pocket. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of Justin Fields in this game as well. Be interesting. I think it was a bad move to move off of Justin Fields, um, but I think it boded bode well for uh, Justin Fields to maybe get a midseason trade should there be some injuries that happen or come up. Uh, before the deadline. I don't know, man. I think he could be the quarterback for the future for the Steelers. It'd be smart to keep him around. They've got Russ on, what, a one-year deal? Is this it? So, I mean, it might be smart to just let him sit around, but uh, who knows? The Steelers could be looking at uh, getting somebody even better or having more picks and bringing in more talent. Or keeping Russ again. Or that. Or that. Uh, No Tommy on the show this week. Again, he's sick. He couldn't make it around for Raider week uh, because they take on the Chiefs. uh, And, uh, you know, just just a sorry state from Tommy right there. So we don't get any of his bets. But you can check us out on Twitter at Bob and Bo Show, B-O-B-N-B-O Show. Um, Check us out there. I'm sure Tommy will update his only cowards take the under uh, there before we get into Sunday's showdowns. Uh, so if you want some bets, you want to tail them, you want to fade him, probably fade him. Follow us there. Uh, definitely you'll fade him. You'll actually win some money. 
Uh, I'm excited to see uh, some big things that come out of these three games of the week that we've chosen here. See what uh, Caleb Williams can do after a bye week coming home from England, uh, especially against the commies. I'm hoping Jaden Daniels plays. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, with Anthony Richardson as well, because uh, that should be a good game down there in Houston. I'm going to be so pissed if Anthony or uh, Jaden Daniels does play and I pick the Bears. I'm going to be so pissed. That'll be that'll be a bad move by you because I'm not letting you change it. Oh, I know. I'm not changing it now. <laughs> Locked in. Join us, join us uh, next week as we recap everything that's happened here from NFL Week 8 and any new trades that may have happened because the NFL is on one this year, and I, for one, am here for it. Until next time, go Chiefs. Go Chiefs.